Here are five Qui-Gon Jinn facts that take place after episode one. Yeah, you heard that right. Let's get weird. You're fulfilling your destiny. So this video, I want to talk about five Qui-Gon Jinn facts that take place after the Phantom Menace. You know, after he gets a, a huge hole put in his torso by the galaxy's second hottest Sith. Obviously, Palpatine post-episode three is in the number one spot. The things I would do to him. So hey, let's start with number five. I, wait, why am I counting backwards? Qui-Gon had a hard time appearing as a force ghost as we traditionally see them, appearing as they did in life, which makes sense as Qui-Gon was one of the first to become a force ghost, and then he taught Yoda and Obi-Wan. He was, of course, taught by someone else, but we won't get into that video, or someone's else. And Qui-Gon had a little trial and error to go with. It wasn't until after Anakin fell to the dark side that he pushed himself to fully emerge as a force ghost. And the effort actually took him almost a decade, though of course time to a forest ghost isn't that big of a deal. And if you want to know something super cute, Qui-Gon actually pushed himself a lot harder to form himself as a forest ghost as Obi-Wan had last seen him in life after Anakin fell to the dark side because he didn't want his one-time Padawan to be alone in the desert. Ooh, extra fun fact. When Qui-Gon was visiting Kenobi in the Tatooine desert while he was watching over Luke, he took to calling Obi-Wan Padawan again, just to show that despite his age and experience, Obi-Wan still had a lot to learn. Number four, Qui-Gon actually knew where Luke was going to end up in life and how his death would come about, and he legitimately felt bad for Luke, but he decided not to tell Obi-Wan because he just didn't want to hurt the man any further. Which, by the way, when Obi-Wan made his transition to a Force ghost, he also saw Luke's future path and, and where it ended, and he was also just brokenhearted. Number three, Qui-Gon through the Force saw the charred body of Luke's uncle and aunt and thought that they knew the risks when taking in Luke as a baby, but he had never seen anything quite as pure and heroic as what they still chose to do. He of course is also completely in awe of his one-time Padawan Obi-Wan and how he had gone through hell and back and still was unfaltering and stayed the course. I don't know, I kind of think it's a big deal if you can in impress a force ghost. Number two, Qui-Gon visited Obi-Wan shortly before his Padawan died on the Death Star. And despite Qui-Gon knowing Obi-Wan's death was coming soon, he chose not to tell the man. But the last thing Qui-Gon does say to Kenobi is, we shall meet again soon, my Padawan. With Obi-Wan thinking in his Force Ghost form, but Qui-Gon knowing that they'd be meeting in the Force after Obi-Wan's death. It is kind of weird to read as a Force Ghost, they have access to a lot of information, and despite Qui-Gon thinking Obi-Wan has so little time left to live, he also feels neutral about Obi-Wan's future death, knowing that it has to happen, but at the same time anticipating the reunion with Obi-Wan. Which is kind of cute because Qui-Gon can't wait for Obi-Wan to be one with the Force, to become a Force Ghost, so that they can communicate in a way that far beyond the crude use of language, or words out loud. Finally, number one, Qui-Gon felt intense guilt over forcing Obi-Wan to train Anakin. In fact, here's something really sad that the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon says to Obi-Wan. You weren't ready to be a Jedi Master, Qui-Gon admits. You hadn't even been knighted when I forced you to promise to train Anakin. Teaching a student so powerful, so old, so unused to our ways, that might have been beyond the reach of the greatest of us, to lay that burden at your feet when you were hardly more than a boy." But even with Qui-Gon telling Obi-Wan that, Obi-Wan said, hey, Anakin falling to the dark side, maybe you and I, we have a hand in it. We didn't do everything we could have to stop it. But at the end of the day, that was Anakin's choice to go to the dark side, and this isn't on either of us completely. And despite Obi-Wan basically forgiving Qui-Gon and saying it's not that big of a deal, Qui-Gon still thinks that doesn't absolve my guilt and what I did to you. So there you go, there are five fun facts about Qui-Gon 
after episode one. Thanks so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe for more Star Wars videos.